with Jesus captured in the garden, abandoned, and we left in quiet reflection of this. Tonight, we go with Jesus through his judgment, through the crucifixion, and through his burial. And we will go along in this journey with scripture and with song. There will be parts that you will notice where we will sing with the choir, and there will be readers. I just invite you to follow along in the bulletin. At the very end, uh, we will also again leave in quiet departure as tomorrow night is the closure of the three-day journey with an Easter vigil. And so we will begin with singing together. I invite you all to stand. Thank you. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. His disciples followed him, and when he came to the place, he told them, Pray that you will not be overcome by temptation. Then Jesus walked about a stone's throw away, and he knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet not my will, but thy will be done. Then an angel of the Lord appeared and strengthened him. Jesus prayed more fervently, and he was in such anguish that his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground.
After Jesus rose from praying, he went to his disciples and said, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders. Now Judas had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came to do. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. Suddenly, one of Jesus' companions drew out a sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. But Jesus said, Put your sword back in its place, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and immediately he will provide me with more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? Then Jesus said to the crowd, Have you come with swords and clubs to capture me as if I were a thief? Every day I sat teaching in the temple, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. They took Jesus to the high priest, Caiaphas, and all the chief priests, elders, and teachers of the law came together. Peter followed them at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he stood there with the guards, warming himself at the fire. 
The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin council were looking for testimony against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and bore false witness against Jesus, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this man-made temple, and in three days I will build another temple not made by human hands. Still, their testimonies did not agree. Then the high priest stood and asked Jesus, Why don't you answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ? the Son of the Blessed One. Jesus replied, I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Father and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes and asked, Why do we need any more witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned Jesus as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him, they blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophecy! Then the guards also took him and beat him. Very early in the morning, the chief priests, elders, teachers of the law, and the entire Sanhedrin council reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replied, Yes, it is as you say. The chief priests accused him of many things, so again Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But still, Jesus made no reply, much to Pilate's surprise. Now it was the custom of the festival for Pilate to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone for whom they asked. A man named Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during an insurrection. 
So the crowd began to shout for Pilate to observe this custom, but Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Pilate realized that the chief priest had handed Jesus over because of jealousy. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? They shouted, crucify him, Pilate asked. Why? What crime has he committed? But they shouted even louder, crucify him. And after Jesus was flogged, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the governor's headquarters and called together the whole garrison. They clothed him in a purple robe and twisted together a crown of thorns, putting it on his head. They began to salute him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Now as they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and they laid the cross on him so he could carry it for Jesus. A great crowd of people followed Jesus, and women mourned and wept for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. There were two criminals who were led with Jesus to be crucified. And when they came to the place called Calvary, Jesus was crucified with the criminals, one on his right hand and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do.
It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified Jesus. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. Those who passed by shouted insult at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and scribes were also mocking him and saying, He saved others, but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even the robbers who were crucified with Jesus taunted him. To the ninth hour, darkness fell all over the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. But others said, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried out again in a loud voice saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. When the centurion who was guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, he praised God and said, Surely this was the Son of God.
Go now in peace. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep and strengthen you this night and forevermore. Now let us pray as Jesus taught. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as